And if we have a goal and I ask you, well, where would you like to be in three years? Well, I'd like to be here. You know, that's a pretty big jump. In fact, too big a jump to make. So people give up because they say, well, yeah, it'd be nice to be, you know, up there and do those things, but uh, it's too much. I'm not going to do it. So the trick to success here is to break it up into tiny little pieces and make those little pieces part of your lifestyle. In other words, not a change that you make for a week or a month or six months, like a fad diet, <clears throat> which many people do, and they all fail, by the way, because <laughs> right. we, don't, we don't stick to them. Uh, and why don't we stick to them? Well, because in many cases, they don't fit our lifestyle, uh, our culture, our families. Uh, they're burdensome and difficult. Well, if it's going to be burdensome and difficult, you're not going to do it. <laughs> right. So the trick is to find these little lifestyle changes that you can incorporate into your life every day for the rest of your life. And those little changes have to be, I wouldn't say fun, but at least manageable, doable, reasonable. And that's what I do in the book. I, I actually give the people 101 suggestions and then challenge them to come up with 101 more and i want you to make it a game games make it fun so if it's not fun we won't do it so let's make it fun and the way you can make it fun is you say well you know i'm going to look around and i'm going to find one little change i can make in my lifestyle this week make one every week okay oh nice it's really not onerous it's pretty easy to do and once you get going and you make a game of it, it becomes fun. And after a year, if you've kept to that, you've made 50 little changes. Now, one of those changes isn't going to make any difference in your lifestyle or your longevity or your health. Okay, so I start taking vitamin C because I wasn't taking it before. All right, there's one change. Is that going to save your life? Mm, probably not. It may help a little bit. But after you've made 50 of these little changes in a year, and you've kind of gotten on the program and you've gotten used to it and you that becomes part of your lifestyle. In a couple of years, you've made hundreds of little changes. You're a different person, literally. Your behavior is different. Your health will be different. Your attitude will be different. And you're going to see real significant changes. That's the key. That's the goal. Yeah. And you know, it's, you, you said it's fun and it's easy and it's interesting, but you also manage to me to make it meaningful. There's something about the way you write, which I think makes your book different from other books too, because you really do seem to find the meaning in all of this. Well, I've read lots and lots of books on longevity and health and nutrition and so on. Uh, exercise uh, over the past years. And I've read a lot uh, as research for this book. And I got to tell you, I was underwhelmed by most of them. Uh, in fact, all of them. Uh, most of them focus on one topic. So there's a really good book out there called The Miracle of, of uh, Magnesium. Okay. Yes. Taking magnesium is real good for you. Again, is it going to save your life? Eh, probably not. Uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. Yes, take it. But I mean, basically what this book did was was explain every problem you can imagine in your health and link it to magnesium. All right. Well, that means magnesium is important. I get the point. Right. <laughs> However, <laughs> I, I need to read 100 books like that on 100 different topics and then put all the right. pieces together. People don't have the time or the, you know, will to do that. So they won't sure. do it. So that's why I did it. And I, I researched it and tried to find, you know, as many of these little changes that we can make uh, and then explain them. So it's not just, hey, take magnesium. Right. Uh, it's good for you. No, here's why it's good for you. And here's how it's going to change your life, life and longevity and so on. So I try to explain it. And uh, I don't, you know, some people have complained about my writing as being dense uh, I don't use a lot of words. I try to say things as as concisely and precisely as I can. Uh, you know, I'm a scientist, so I guess that's the way I think. Uh, 
so I don't use a lot of stories. I don't gab a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of fluff in my books. Uh, yeah, but you know, I'm so not scientific, Len, and I didn't find it that way. I found it direct and understandable and insightful and interesting. And I'm pretty, um, you know, if it is too scientific and I like to understand the science behind something, but you do a great job of explaining that. I don't like it when somebody just tells me something mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to just take their word for it. Yep. <laughs> so I like that you provide background, but you have a lovely uh, prose. I really liked the actual writing. You said you're a reader and that, you know, I think readers can sometimes make the best writers. So have you always been interested in health in longevity? Is this something that you've always been interested in? For a long time. Yeah. Well, I spent my career in the food industry, uh, you know, worked a lot on uh, nutrition and diet and, and, uh, and health, uh, the impact of food and, and such on health. And of course, I have an interest, uh, uh, a selfish interest. <laughs> uh, I've been going to a longevity doctor uh, since 2006. So wow. that's a bunch of years. And I made some pretty significant changes in my own uh, life based on, uh, you know, their assessment and their guidance. Uh, it was it was a life changing experience. Uh, like most people, I was a little bit overweight. But I'm I'm six foot four, so I carry it really well. Meaning I don't look fat, right? All right. Uh, but anyway, what I did over the next year after I started that program uh, is I lost uh, twenty five pounds. Oh no, I'm sorry, I lost fifteen pounds. Okay, which is not a terrific amount. So I went from like two twenty five down to two ten. Okay, uh, but I was exercising more and and more effectively. And changed my diet a bit to reduce uh, cal caloric intake and such. Uh, I dropped 25 pounds of fat. And I'm sorry, I dropped 40 pounds of fat and added 15 pounds or 25 pounds of muscle. Wow. That's a huge change. That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. Now, if you looked at me, you probably wouldn't know it. But I, right. I, after I did it, I was leaner, meaner, much stronger. Uh and and much healthier uh, probably felt better and felt better yes so you know I'm, I'm i'm 70 years old now i've been doing this for uh 15 years since i was uh you know uh, uh 55 or so and uh i can probably outwork anybody i know <laughs> that's phenomenal yeah yeah you've I got that out, uh, yeah my son and my son-in-law I, I can outwork them anytime I mean, they're, yeah. you know, 40, 41 and uh, 35. Uh, they're amazed at what I can do. And uh, and I'm going to continue that. That's that's my goal is is do what I can to maintain that. Because, you know, it. part of living longer and healthier, and I even mentioned in the title, I don't want to live longer if I'm going to be, you know, debilitated. Right. That's not fun. Okay. It's not worth it. Uh, if I'm going to work hard, uh, or do anything at all to live longer, it's got to be healthier. So I've got to be able to do what I want to do and, uh, you know, and maintain that. And it can be so, done. Len, can you go back? I Can you tell me about your childhood? How did you grow up? Did you grow up around here or in Bucks County? Where are you from? Grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey. <laughs> uh, I've, I've always been uh, a hard worker and a reader. Uh, in grammar school, I read every book in the library, which wow. you know, probably had, I don't know, 500 books, but I pretty much read every one. I went to high school, I started doing the same thing. They had many more books than that, so I never did finish all of them. But I, again, I used to make it a game, make it fun. So I would go to the library, pick up, walk around, try and find something I knew nothing about take that book home, read it. And then because it's a library book, you got to bring it back in a month or two weeks. I forget what it was. And when I go back, I pick up another couple. And I kept doing that for years and years. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I made it fun. I made it a game. 
where did that come from? Do you come from readers? 